Hello, in this video I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks for Xiaomi 14T and 14T Pro. So let's get right into it. If you go to the settings and open Wi-Fi, then over here you should be able to find network acceleration options, where you can for instance use dual band Wi-Fi speed boost in order to connect to multiple Wi-Fi networks at the same time to boost the speed. In addition to that, we can also use the mobile data to boost speed as well. In that case, we use both Wi-Fi and mobile data to boost speed when Wi-Fi connection is poor. Another thing that we can do is in the settings go to mobile networks and then choose your SIM card. And then over here, if you scroll down, you will have make calls using Wi-Fi. So if you have access to Wi-Fi pretty much all the time, especially at home, of course, then you definitely want to use this feature. By doing so, you can use Wi-Fi to make and receive calls whenever possible. Then if you go back and go to the lock screen settings, then over here you should be able to access the wallpaper carousel, which allows you to pretty much have a different wallpaper for the lock screen every time you open the lock screen. Now, some people like it, some people don't. So if you want to make some changes to that, this feature is um, enabled by default. If you don't want to use it, then of course you want to make sure that the show wallpaper carousel on lock screen is disabled. And the same goes with the swipe right to view more. This option can be turned off. After that, you should be able to confirm to disable wallpaper carousel. On the other hand, if you actually wish to have this, if you want to have different wallpapers every time you open the lock screen, then of course, feel free to use it. However, it is also worth mentioning that over here we have the update wallpapers using mobile data option. And in order to not lose mobile data for those wallpapers, you might want to turn this option off if it's enabled. So it's worth checking this out. Now, the next thing is in notifications and status bar. And over here, you can scroll down to enable or disable label, labels for icons. So if you open uh, for the control center, of course, if you open the control center, then of course you have all these buttons, these shortcuts, however, they don't have names. So sometimes, especially if you use this uh, operating system for the first time, you may not recognize all of these icons. In order to not have this issue, you can disable this option. And now if you open the control center, you will find names for these shortcuts. And this is, I think, pretty convenient, like I said, for those who are not uh, familiar yet with all these uh, icons. And now the next thing is in the home screen settings. So this time we're going to go to the home screen. And over here, if you scroll down, you have arranged items in Recents. Uh, Recents is, of course, the background apps that are running once you open them. And over here, you can choose the arrangement of those um, of those apps. So, for instance, you can use a vertically uh, vertical arrangement or horizontal one, uh, depending, of course, on your preference. However, in addition to that, there is one more option that I want to show you, and that is the blur app previews. If you turn on this option for specific apps, then if you go to the recents or background apps, there will be no preview. So as an example, over here, I have gallery enabled. So there is gallery enabled and the blur for gallery is enabled. Of course, if I open the gallery, nothing happens. But if I go to the recent, you will see that there is this blur, which allows me to hide the content over here. And if I, of course, turn off the gallery uh, in the Blur App Preview setting, then of course I can now see what's going on over there. So this is a pretty cool way to actually hide the content in the background apps if you care about that. Now let's go back to the settings. And over here we, we will go to Display and Brightness. And if you scroll down, you will find AI a Image Engine. This is a menu where we have three pretty cool options that are worth, worth checking out. The first one is the super resolution that allows you to enhance quality of the videos. Maybe not quality, but the resolution. So if you watch a low resolution video, you can actually enhance it with this feature. Of course, this uses more power. It increases power consumption. Uh, so keep that in mind. Then we also have the AI HDR enhancements. Uh, enhancement actually, which processes videos using HDR effects to bring out more details in the lighter and darker areas. 
So we can turn this option on as well. And then we also have MEAC, which allows you to generate additional frames in low frame videos. So on the left side, we have an example of a low frame video where it is actually, let's call it stuttering, but, but not really. This is just due to the low amount of uh, frames per second. And this feature allows you to add more frames so that the video feels smoother. However, uh, it is worth reading this description. Uh, because this feature works only when the video toolbox is enabled. And in order to enable the video toolbox, we need to actually go to the additional settings. And then in accessibility, we want to go to physical. Wait, hold on. No, I don't think it's there. Oh uh, yeah, we need to go to floating windows actually, then go to the sidebar. And over here we have the video toolbox where we can enable and disable this option. So it is pretty hidden. And if you actually want to use this feature, then you need to turn this option on. The sidebar doesn't have to be enabled, but the video toolbox needs to be enabled. Now, another thing that is worth mentioning is the sound equalizer. We can go to sound and vibration. And then over here, if you go to sound effects, then you should be able to find the graphic equalizer. Whether you use Dolby Atmos or Xiaomi Sound, you can access the graphic equalizer. You have a bunch of different presets. And of course, you can choose whatever you like with the range of, um, of sounds. So you can adjust how the music sounds, how in general the audio sounds over here. All right, and another thing is of course always on display because on this device we actually have always on display. In order to find it and activate it and customize it, we need to go to wallpaper and personalization. And then over here we have always on display. Here we can turn this on. We can choose what should be displayed. We have themes, signatures, clocks, and so on and so forth. So there are plenty of customization options. Then we also have edge lighting or something that is actually called notification effects. This is how it's called on this device. So you want to go to notification effects in the same settings. And then over here, you can, for instance, turn on this pulse that will be triggered when you receive a notification or this starlight. Pretty cool. And now let's go to the battery settings. Over here, we have battery protection, which is worth checking out because um, if you care about your battery and if you want to keep the battery in a healthy state for as long as possible, then you probably want to change the charging protection, at least to optimize charging. Of course, you can go there in order to also enable the nighttime charging protection, but in general, it is recommended to use one of these two charging protection methods. And of course, if that's not, um, if that that's actually not all, because at the top over here we have the information about our battery, where we can check the battery health, so the general state of our battery, as well as the temperature. And that's also a pretty cool feature that allows you to have some insight of your battery. Now, another thing is we can go to additional settings, and this time we're going to go to gesture shortcuts. And it is worth checking out and enabling or disabling some of these gestures. For instance, of course, we have screenshot gestures. Not only that, we can, because also we can uh, launch the camera by double pressing the power button or uh, double pressing the volume down uh, button when the screen is locked. So if you go to the launch camera, you have two options. You can choose one of them or both of them if, if you want to in order to have a quick access to the camera. And the same goes, for instance, with the flashlight. We can double press the power button in order to turn on the flashlight and, of course, turn it off as well. Pretty cool feature to have flashlight ready to go all the time. And the next thing is the extension RAM. So let's go back actually to the, to the additional settings. And over here, if you go to memory extension, then here we can expand our RAM. Of course, the RAM is expanded by taking the storage space. So if you have lots of storage space, you can actually exchange it to additional memory or additional RAM. Uh, you can, of course, choose how much uh, RAM you want to have more. And after that, you will need to reboot your device. And once it is restarted, you will have additional RAM. And the next thing is the screen recorder settings, because Maybe not all of you, of course, will use the screen recorder. However, it is worth checking out, especially for those who actually use the screen recorder, uh, at least from time to time, because there are some multiple different options that can be 
um, changed in order to improve the quality of screen recorder. For instance, the resolution, the video quality can be increased to even 100 megabits per second. We have the orientation, which can be predetermined. We have the sound source, so we can choose system. Uh, so we have the audio from our smartphone. We can use microphone only or both. And we can also change the frame rate. So this is pretty huge because by default we have 24 frames per second when we use the screen recorder. However, we can increase it even to 90 FPS. Of course, the better settings, the more the, the recorded video actually weighs. So keep that in mind that they will take more space. Um, but if you care about the highest quality possible, then of course it is important to check that out. And of course over here we can also show uh, gestures and show button taps over here. Now, uh, in addition to those settings, we still uh, are in the additional settings, but this time I want to also show you the quick ball, which is a pretty cool feature that allows you to use a, a quick ball like it is called. So this is the circle button over here that allows you to have some additional options like the screenshot option, the you can lock the screen. You can open the recents or background apps and so on and so forth. Of course, you can move the circle circle around whatever you want it to be. And I think that's pretty cool. Of course, you can hide it, you can exp expand it and so on and so forth. Definitely worth checking out. Pretty cool feature that I haven't really seen on other devices yet. Uh, maybe except for other Xiaomi devices. Now, another thing that is also worth checking out is the app drawer customization. If you use the app drawer, you can tap uh, on the settings icon over here in the top right corner, and then you have some customization options. For instance, you can choose the categories, which are, of course, over here at the top. So you can switch between different categories over here. Um, but what is more, even more important is that you can create your own custom category over here. You can enter the name of the category. You can choose apps which should be included in the category. So that's pretty cool. Then we also have the scroll bar, which can be set to original layout or from A to Z. We can place new apps on the home screen if you want to. If not, then of course you can disable that feature. We have group icons by color, which are categorized in, in categories pretty much. So um, if you go back and let's say if you go to communication, then they should be sorted so, sort, sorted sort of by um, by colors of the app. Of course, the all the whole list is not included over here, but in general, this is how it looks like. And of course, we also have app suggestions, which can be disabled over here if you don't want to have them here. All right. So now that we have uh, the app drawer mentioned, the next thing that I want to show you is once again in the settings. This time we're going to go to apps. And over here we want to go to system app settings. And then over here we want to choose security. And here we have common features shortcut. This allows you to add to the home screen those items over here. So if you want to quickly have the button or icon for battery optimization, then of course you can turn this on. You can turn on, for instance, the cleaner or even the deep clean or clean up option. We have the data usage, blacklist, and so on and so forth. So now that I have those two icons enabled, if I go back to the home screen, I will find them over here. A pretty good way to have quick access to certain features. And another thing that I want to mention is the boost speed. But this time we're going to open the app drawer and we're going to go to the security app. Over here, we can tap on boost speed in order to quickly get rid of cache files of uh, third of uh, third party apps that are running in the background. Of course, we can decide exactly what we want to free up and one and what not. We have running system apps and locked running apps. We can press this button in order to quickly release some space or the RAM. The next thing is still in the security app. We're going to stick with the st security app for now. And this time I want to show you the option. Actually, let's open the toolbox. So over here at the bottom, you can swipe up in order to open the toolbox. And over here we have the second space, which allows you to create pretty much a duplicate of your device. Uh, you can have a second instance of your device of everything that is there. Uh, by using a different password, a different screen lock. So you can have two screen locks 
And depending which one you use in the lock screen, you will get access to a different space or a different instance. So if you want, for instance, to separate, let's say, personal life from work, but you have only one phone, then you can still do that by creating a second space over here. And another thing in the toolbox is the uh, problem solver. We have solve problems over here. We can check the performance of our device, the network settings, battery and other issues. And then we will see some optimization suggestions. Um, so for instance, we have the information that my device slows down where we have too many accessibility features are working at the same time. This might slow down our device so we can turn this option off. So we will be redirected to accessibility in order to turn off some features. We have the battery usage where we have more than five apps, at least in my case, that are allowed to auto start and we can restrict that in order to save battery. And there we go. So this is a pretty good way to find out what we can do in order to speed up our device. And last but not least, we have the deep clean over here. So in order to delete unnecessary files like installation files where we can delete duplicated videos or something, where we can uninstall apps that we don't use at all, or we can clear up data and delete photos that may seem unnecessary like duplicates. So over here we can see the steps that we can take in order to free up a certain amount of space. In my case, it is a whole 13 gigabytes, so actually quite a lot. So for instance, over here, I can uninstall apps. And if I go over here, I can choose which apps can I uninstall. We have suggestions. Of course, we don't have to delete all of them. We can decide what we want to uninstall by simply selecting on the right side. And once you choose everything, then of course, you will see how much space you can actually get back. So you can choose that in order to get some uh, space back. At the bottom, we also have app specific suggestions as well. Uh, we have the option to clear up data. We have the option to delete photos over here. Uh, we can even spot accidental photos or duplicate photos, which is pretty cool. So that's pretty much it. These are all tips and tricks that I wanted to show you for Xiaomi 14T and 14T Pro. If you actually managed to find something more that might be interesting for others, then you can of course share it in the comments. Let me know what you think of this video, if something was uh, unnecessary or if something was not mentioned that you, that you think should be mentioned. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to my channel and see you in my next videos. Bye.